Okay. <coughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon to everyone. We are indeed happy this afternoon. We continue with our Islamic finance financial talk series, <coughs> Economic and Financial Outlook 2021. We are indeed delighted to have two distinguished speakers, Professor Dr. Muhammad Nazari Ismail, Professor from the Department of Business and Policy Strategy, University of Malaya. How are you, Prof? Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. And also, we are happy to have Yang Berbahagia Datuk Muhammad Zabidi Ahmad, who is the Senior Managing Director of CIMB Bank. How are you, Datuk? Alhamdulillah, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, okay. Hopefully, I can share my uh, experience to the participant. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you also to Datuk for accepting our invitation. I'm the, I'm the moderator for this program, Muhammad Azam Muhammad Adil, Deputy CEO of IS Malaysia. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, last October, the International Monetary Fund revised its world economic outlook and forecasted that the world would experience an economic slump up to negative 4.4% in 2020, which marks a further 1.4% decline compared to the forecast in April 2020, that is minus or we call it negative 3%. As the global economy braces for an economic downturn and prolongs recession, questions arise on its potential adverse impacts on the Islamic finance industry. This Islamic finance talk series discusses the outlook of economy and Islamic finance in 2021, particularly within the context of post-COVID-19 pandemic. We are very happy and delighted again to say that these two distinguished speakers will be sharing with us on this subject. We will start first with Professor Nazari. Uh, over to you, Prof. Nazari. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalam. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Azam and Dr. Muhammad Zabidi and also uh, others who are listening. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, now, what? How do I see the uh, the future for Malaysia? I want to uh, divide into two two uh, way of uh, two aspects of looking. I think one is the short term, and one is long term. So, uh, short term could maybe in the next uh, six months, first six months, or first uh, the first uh, quarter of next year. What is going to happen? As we know, the the government has is spending a lot of money. Uh, we have a budget deficit of about eighty four billion. In order for the government to make sure that the economy can keep growing, so I uh, expect this uh, expenditure by the government will have a very uh, at least a short term impact on the economy in terms of uh, preventing it from going down. Uh, so. Uh, Companies which uh, or individuals which do not have money to spend will have money to spend, you know, and and therefore companies which may may not be receiving any uh, business at all will have some business ongoing, due to the money that is being spent by the government. Of course, this is borrowed money which will have long term implication for the government you know, in terms of uh, in terms of the future revenue. As we know, uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago, uh, fish ratings downgraded. Our mm. government government's rating, uh, and one of the reasons is because of the uh, increase in government debt. They they think mm. that the government may have problem dealing with the debt uh, in terms of how are they going to collect money in order to service the debt. Uh, the GST is no longer there, and they may have to rely on uh, the on the GLCs, on Petronas and others and and many of these are, may not be doing very well also. So where are they going to find the money? So because they, they do not see or they are not sure how the government is going to find the money to service the, 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 the increase in debt, that is the reason why I think they downgraded um, our, uh, our rating. Plus also the other point is uh, they also see uh, some possible political uncertainties the future because the government is not very strong at the moment and therefore in order to uh, to make sure that uh, the government will remain in power the, the best way to do this is to spend more money right uh, to mm. uh, 
uh, and we know this. Uh, everybody's talking about this. Uh, the government budget is huge. Uh, minister, number of ministers and deputy ministers, ministries are huge also. So this, this, this uh, when the government is not strong and there is political uncertainty, the government may resort to spending money and therefore increase the debt. And this, this is one of the reasons why uh, the, uh, the rating agency is not very, uh, it's not very what is quite, quite concerned and quite worried about. Uh, the prospect of the government uh, being able to handle the debt. Okay, what about uh, other aspects in the future? I I don't see uh, I don't see the government is going to impose any more lockdown uh, in the future. As we know, that the numbers are quite high now, but uh, the government is still allowing uh, what uh, imposing lockdowns only in certain areas only. No more national lockdown or widespread lockdown. So. In that, in that sense, therefore, uh, that will that will prevent any uh, any serious problem in the economy. Uh, so that may help to uh, promote growth of uh, certain sectors like tourism and others. Right at the moment, this is really suffering. But when when we don't have any more lockdown in the future, hopefully these sectors may may pick up. Um, and uh, another aspect uh, which. Uh, which we may want to be concerned about in the future is is the issue of inflation uh, because there has that will have long-term implication as well so in the short term is is inflation going to take place or not um, at the moment it is not a problem but then when they have government spending so much money and then uh, the supply side is not doing so well because many many companies cannot operate Many businesses can operate, so you may have supply problems. Uh, some people, uh, when they get the money from the government, they may actually not spend yet. They can they will keep the money with them, uh, hoping to spend in the future. So there may be some increase in expenditure in the future. And but and when that happens, when they keep the money and then they spend in the future, I do not know when. Sometime next year, and when you have supply problem, then that that may cause. Uh, inflation uh, so and when you have inflation in the economy that will have many other ramifications uh, for example if you have inflation then that can have an effect on our currency uh, our ringgit may go down and if the ringgit goes down that will contribute that can contribute to many problems especially in terms of the cost of imports and when you have a cost of the cost of imports going up that will contribute more to inflation because a lot of our food, for example, is uh, imported. Even we import uh, fish, right? Uh, even rice are imported. So if that, if the import price goes up, we may have uh, inflation in the future, and that may make things worse and worse. So that's what is very, very uh, worrying. Eh? Uh, we do not know what what will happen, but some economies, as uh, I was mentioning to our panelists before, are uh, saying that we may see inflation. A pressure in uh, developing countries such as Malaysia. And then uh, what other things may, may happen in the future? Uh, as we know, there will be uh, a moratorium. The, the moratorium is in place at the moment, but that will end uh, sometime in March, right? sometimes uh, next year in March. And what's going to happen during that time? That is also uh, very worrying also because if, if you have uh, a situation where many companies are not able to cope uh, when moratorium end, they have to start paying back the debt, and they are not able to pay the debt. They may fall up. Uh, they may fall. They may cease to operate. Uh, individuals may cease to operate, and there may be a, a, a sudden a slowdown in the economy on certain markets. Uh, some people may be desperate to 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 overcome their financial problem, and they may start trying to sell. Yeah, properties, for example, they may want to sell their cars. If that happens, then there may be a, a sharp slowdown. Uh, and that that is also uh, something which we may, we may have to be very worried about. Huh? So you have uh, inflation, and, and then you have also uh, a stagnant economy and crash. Uh, that is That can be very serious also. Huh? Uh, a stagflation can also take place, inflation and a very stagnant economy. Okay, what about the international scenario in the short term? Um, not very, uh, it's not very easy to read what's going to happen in the international scenario. Yeah. Yeah. 
there are there is the China, there is America, and there's Europe, right? And there's Japan, uh, which are all going to have impact on our economy. The, at the moment, what is looking good is only China. I think uh, the Chinese economy is seem to be doing okay in the short term. Of course, there are many question marks. Also, some economists say that the Chinese figures are not very reliable. So, we, if that is the case, then it's difficult also to read what's happening. What's happening. But certainly, the figures that come up from China shows that they are doing well, especially since they are also the ones that are importing, exporting their uh, yeah. equipment to other economy, right? Other economy kind of function, we are, we are importing stuff from China. So Chinese economy is capitalizing on the growth or, or on the uh, the fact that other economies uh, cannot op cannot operate, they cannot supply stuff. And the, the Chinese companies are supplying all these, such, such as uh, medical equipment, and ventilators, etc. So the Chinese are supplying this, so the economy is okay. If the Chinese economy is okay, that can help our economy because we also export to it, uh, Chinese economy. Chinese, but what, about, yeah. what about the other uh, regions? Europe is very, very uncertain. Uh, they have been having problems for a long time now. As you know, some some European countries, the, the economy is so, so stagnant uh, that they have even uh, resorted to negative rates in order to, to get the economy uh. going, right. Uh, when you have negative rates, that shows that the economy is really slow, uh, such that they have to, to resort to this very, very unconventional policy. So some economists say that there may be this situation in Europe that they may some countries are so slow to pick up they, they may resort to to a negative rates. Uh, so I don't I don't see uh, Europe European countries uh, being uh, going growing uh, uh, or, or having positive influence on our economy. I think Europe is going to be very very slow, uh, and then you have other problems. Well, we know also COVID is uh, is is actually rampaging in uh, Europe at the moment. And then you have the Brexit issues also uh, in, in the case of UK and, and Europe. So there are many problems. So that will not have a positive effect on our economy. And then uh, what, are, what are the other aspects? What about US? Huh? The US economy, uh, again, very uncertain. Uh, we, we, uh, of course, we're gonna have a new president over there, Joe Biden. Uh, but is he going to have a positive influence on the economy? Nobody is saying that at the moment, actually. Nobody is saying that. Uh, even their policies between America and China may not change drastically uh, when Biden uh, takes over, basically, right? Uh, the only thing that they may, uh, the, the, the only thing that is really different between Biden and, and Trump actually, actually is on the, on the climate change policy. Because Biden said that he's going to to make sure that they are serious about that. But that is also, there is a question mark on that because if the economy is really difficult over there in in the US, I don't think uh, a climate change problem uh, or sustainable development or green uh, carbon carbon emission is, uh, is going to be very important to them. The most important will be something else, which is the economy. And, and what can Biden do to the economy? To be honest, I don't I don't see how Biden is going to be able to solve America's economic problems. There will be a lot. There, there is a lot of unemployment at the moment. There are many companies that are suffering over there at the moment. There are millions and millions of people who are out of job over there in America. What is what is them? They are they are their stimulus program is huge, right? In terms of the amount trillions, it's the only thing they can do is spend more money. Uh, but is that going to really uh, bring the economy out of their doldrums? I don't think so. So, so I don't see uh, that going to uh, that America is going to be uh, the, the engine of growth for the world economy. It's not going to be very easy. Uh, what about Japan? As we know, Japan has been in bad shape for for decades now, for thirty years. And what they have been doing is only to spend more money, basically, right? And such that their public debt to GDP is the worst in the world, more than two hundred fifty percent to GDP. Uh, and nothing is happening over there. In fact, uh, the situation is getting worse in terms of uh, the aging economy. Uh, people, a lot of old people over there, and you have COVID over there, which is not being settled as well. Uh, so, demand is very slow, right? Uh, so, I don't. I also do not see Japan uh, having a positive influence on the world economy as well as on our own economy. Uh, in fact, it, it may get worse over there in Japan. 
as I said now, because of uh, there are the structural problem in terms of the the smaller workforce because of, because of the aging economy. So in, in short, uh, in summary, right, uh, we probably have to depend on our own domestic internal uh, demand for the economy to grow, but our own internal demands got problems also, right? Uh, we have if we want to rely rely on consumer demands the consumer demand to grow also is not going to be very certain as we know now our consumer our household debt people is very high eh? it's actually more than one trillion about close to 90 percent to gdp uh, so that that will not that will mean that the consumers uh, are saddled with huge debt and and that may not uh, help them or convince them to motivate them to spend, right? We have so much debt. Uh, in fact, if we have a, when the moratorium ends later on, when you have a lot of debts, and then you have a lot of a, a problem. Uh, what in the economy? There can be some. The economy is not very, not going to be very resilient. So, uh, so depending on the, we have to depend on domestic demand. Our domestic demand is not, is also not very certain and may actually uh, not very. Uh, I'm not very optimistic also, right? Uh, so uh, in short, very, very worrying days ahead as far as I am concerned. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll stop there. I'll stop there. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Nazari. I think uh, uh, your introductory, I mean, the remarks on this uh, outlook of our economy for 2021 uh, I, I think from your presentation, it, as what you mentioned in the last few words, is quite worrying. Yes. And then you have, uh, I mean, shared with us, um, we have to rely on our own. Uh, if, if, if I can say, depend on our internal demand, but we also have problems. And going to get I mean, these, uh, what we call it, these uh, help uh, from China, Europe, or USA in particular. I mean, you mentioned China, despite it, it is doing well, but we don't know the real figure. Uh, we have no other options but mm. to rely on our own. But we will see what is the industry's feedback on this. Uh, Dr. Zabidi, what okay. do you think? From Prof Nazari's point of view just now, it seems that uh, 2021 will be very, very bad in terms of economic yeah. for Malaysia. Okay, uh, in terms of, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Azam, uh, in actual fact, uh, 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 inviting me to share my uh, experience about 30 years in um, banking industry. Uh, I will talk today on the how uh, Islamic finance uh, can assist uh, uh, rebuilding the uh, global economic that mentioned by uh, uh, the worry by the uh, almost all economists in in the world right so before that I would I would uh, say that uh, introduction in terms of the Islamic finance itself whereby uh, Islamic finance is uh, found under the uh, Sharia principle uh, of Muhammad that govern commercial activity uh, among uh, human beings so in terms of the uh, uh, Islamic finance span across uh, almost uh, all uh, area of financial market, uh, the components of the uh, Islamic finance, financial market is very wider, right? It consists of the uh, uh, banking sector, it consists of uh, money market, it consists of uh, debt capital market, equity uh, capital market, derivative, uh, private equities, you know, uh, Takaful, REITs, asset management, uh, non-financial services, and other financial products and also activities. Uh, Sharia is uh, facilitated this uh, unlimited market for the uh, Islamic financial institution product and services uh, as they are beneficial for uh, Muslim and also uh, non-Muslim. For example, the Muslim people, they wanted something like product that uh, services that provided the value and uh, meet their personal and also preferred Sharia application as found under the different school of thought, which is we can have uh, Hambali, Maliki, uh, 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 Shafi, and also 
uh, Hanafi. For non-Muslim, uh, they wanted a product that uh, services uh, that give him, him a, a true value uh, to them. They won't care about uh, sharing compliance, but care about ethical business and uh, social responsibility, uh, which uh, are embedded under the uh, Sharia principle. Uh, to come across of this, uh, what's the importance of the uh, rules need to observe uh, under Islamic finance? As we, uh, we all know that this uh, avoidance of provision under the Islamic, you cannot have a riba, you, know, you cannot have a gara, you cannot have the gambling, you cannot have uh, producing and selling goods there are no value. And lastly, this uh, producing and selling of uh, non-halal goods. These things need to be embedded inside the uh, Islamic financial uh, product itself. Uh, the concept that we always know that uh, normally used under this uh, Islamic finance, normally uh, musharaka, which is uh, in Arabic words, uh, means of uh, sharing, uh, which is uh, musharaka in, uh, is ideal alternative for interest-based uh, financing uh, playing a vital role in our economy based on uh, Islamic principle. Secondly, on the ijarah, okay, ijarah in terms of uh, Islamic fix, uh, literacy means uh, to give something or rent. Uh, there is uh, two different situation whereby uh, to employ the service uh, of a person and wages given to him as consideration for his hired services. The second thing on the uh, generally used uh, as a form of uh, investment. Thirdly, on the uh, mudarabah, whereby uh, refer to the an investment on uh, your behalf by more skilled person, which is uh, the uh, uh, provider of fund, we call it uh, Rabu Mal, and uh, who uh, provide the uh, expertise is we call it uh, mudarib. And uh, other than that, we have, uh, you know, uh, the structure is wakala, means uh, agency. Uh, or delegating uh, duty uh, in, onto another party uh, for specific purpose and also uncertain condition. Uh, lastly, on the Murabah, which is famous in Malaysia already, whereby uh, it refer to uh, buying and selling transaction between the banks and the customer, whereby the former buyer a property at the prevailing market price and sell into the uh, customer on markup price, where payment are made by installment over a period of time agreed upon by both party. So uh, moving forward, I want to talk about uh, how Islamic finance uh, can contribute uh, towards a global economy, whereby uh, we can see that uh, Islamic finance is uh, banned from interest, gambling, and also speculation. And also uh, it promotes the kind of focus on partnership and uh, productive investment that seems to have been missing from the global boom of the first decade of the 21st uh, century. Why Islam finance is very uh, important in nature? Because financial uh, asset grows in step with growth in real economic activities, right? Potential for excessive speculation is reduced and uh, social and ethical responsibility are embedded in the investment activity. Uh, maintaining genuine liquidity uh, adds to the stability and the financial services institution, uh, lastly, on the uh, natural economic growth in, uh, uh, is sustained. And in terms of Islamic finance also offering an interest-free alternative has been dubbed and proven to be more effective Excuse in financial... Me, so. Yeah? Uh, we, ca we can't see you. Oh, you can't see me. Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay. Now you can, can see me. Now? Okay. Then. Hello. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, please. Okay. Proceed, please. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the promotion of partnership is one way uh, further contributed to wealth sharing. Thus, the capital is not only in the hand of certain group, which is the main problem of capitalism today. Okay. So, in terms of the uh, 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 Islamic finance, uh, uh, can contribute further. We, we can, based on the United Nations uh, Development Program, they have three ways whereby on short-term uh, uh, emergency support, we can use instruments like uh, zakat, 
uh, which is benefit to the uh, uh, immediate disbursement, poverty uh, elevation, uh, cash transfer, uh, medium term uh, response and also recovery in term of the instrument that we can use is uh, asset and uh, trade financing. This is important to support the uh, businesses and also individual in securing means of uh, livelihood. Uh, lastly, on the uh, long-term recovery and also resilient, uh, we can uh, instrument that we can use is uh, SUKU, which is uh, provide uh, long-term funding for government and also uh, businesses. And the other things on the long-term and uh, recovery resilient, uh, which is we can use this uh, WACAF endowment, which is uh, provide permanent asset uh, for uh, substantial social uh, development. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, for example, we can see now uh, what the Zakat agency can do is that they can adopt uh, structured approaches to SDG uh, alignment and uh, COVID-19 impact, whereby uh, by ident identifying and uh, prioritizing project in services or of uh, specific SDG and uh, pandemic response. Secondly, partnership with uh, uh, international agencies uh, for project implementation, uh, monitoring and also uh, reporting this uh, SDG impact. The other thing is that uh, banks and also investors and, and other financial uh, can likewise organize their, their SGB impact, whereby some of the bank have been uh, doing it, like uh, Al-Baraka, uh, HSBC, uh, Amana, and also the uh, CMB group itself. We have the uh, SDG agenda itself. Uh, lastly, uh, what I mentioned just now on the SUKU and WACAF can provide longer term financing and enhance resilience. For example, like we can see now, uh, this year MOF Indonesia uh, issued about uh, 27 billion uh, SUKU for the purpose of COVID-19. Uh, Malaysian uh, side have been uh, issued the digital for 500 million uh, SUKU uh, for uh, SUKU Priatin. And, uh, the issue is actually is to link to specific SDG and also uh, COVID-19 recovery outcome. Uh, to share further on the, uh, the uh, uh, we call 2021, we can see uh, this year uh, whereby uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, has a significant uh, uh, slowing down the uh, core Islamic uh, financial economic uh, because of uh, the uh, government uh, measures to combat, com combat the uh, spreading of the uh, viruses. The other thing is that we can see from, from uh, Islamic finance by uh, 2021, we can see uh, a slow, uh, uh, will show some mild uh, recovery, uh, whereby um, uh, last year, uh, 2019, uh, 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 we can see a uh, Tremendous growth of the 11.4%, but 2021, I will see that uh, uh, the growth is probably a, a single digit. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the suku itself, uh, we can see uh, uh, suku issuance is uh, fell about uh, 27% in uh, uh, this year, uh, totally um, uh, about uh, 100 billion uh, US dollars which is uh, about 40% lower from uh, 2019, about 162 billion. Uh, this is because of the uh, supporting from the issue from the uh, Turkey government, uh, GCC, Indonesia, and Malaysia. For uh, 2021, uh, we can see that uh, still uh, slower until the, can see the, uh, 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 the economy recovery, uh, you know, for probably next year, uh, middle, middle of next year or third quarter next year, hopefully it can happen. And um, uh, most of the, the, the issue and probably uh, coming from the, uh, to tackle the uh, social uh, issue. Uh, so I think that's my, my, my thoughts on the uh, Islamic finance uh, to share with this uh, uh, participant for today. Thank you, uh, uh, Professor Dr. Azam. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Datuk Zabidi. Uh, you try to, I mean, uh, share with us with how this Islamic uh, finance can contribute towards, uh, I mean, combating the, the problem that we're facing. And you also 
uh, shared with us how these uh, the the short term, uh, mm. I mean solution like zakat and mm. also the medium term asset and, uh, and trading financing, uh, from the summit perspective, we're talking about the summit uh, finance perspective. And in the long term, you mentioned about suku and also wakaf endowment. Uh, and and you mentioned about suku prihatin that uh, the government yeah. has issued, but the yeah. amount is 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 five hundred million. But for the outlook of twenty twenty one, I think um, as you mentioned and also Prof Nazari in the previous presentation, it is uh, very difficult for us to forecast what will be. But uh, you have uh, shared with us the twenty nineteen scenario and twenty twenty and. Uh, and in 2021, uh, for example, uh, if only 2020 from the government, we can only issue 500 million for Prihatin Suku. Do you think perhaps in 2021, we will have more Suku rather than what we have for 2020? That would be questions perhaps that you may answer after this. Okay, uh, we will see what's the question from the uh, from the viewers. I would like to check a uh, question from viewers, but uh, let me uh, just check whether... Okay, um, we have question from Shahrul Abdul Rahim. Uh, we are lucky that our commodities, example, CPO and crude oil are increasing and for the time being still uh, bullish, same to the growth of semiconductors, solar energy industries, as well as glove industries. Yeah, you. I think we know that uh, gloves industries are very do, doing very well. I mean, for example, top glove, huh? solar energy industries, as well as uh, glo uh, gloves industries. What is your opinion on this, huh? Prof Nazari? This question is, is addressed to Prof Nazari. Does the growth in these areas helpful to our economy? Over to you, Prof. Nazari. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, talking about uh, the commodities such as palm oil, I think uh, that was the focus, right? Uh, now, number one is uh, the export market for palm oil. I mentioned so Europe and America. Those economies are not doing very well. So uh, to expect increase in demand for our commodities from those markets uh, would be, I uh, think, would be too overly optimistic. Oh, uh. so the, the economies are not doing very well. They are not going to expand. So how it's difficult for us to expect the growth of our commodity to grow from that, from that side. Secondly, uh, when it comes to palm oil, as you know, there's problem also uh, in the sense that um, the European, especially, and also the Americans are talking about uh, the effect of palm oil on um, on biodiversity, this is the, the green issue thing. Lah. They look at palm oil to be uh, a product that is not hope, that is not uh, helpful for solving uh, uh, sustainable development policies, right? Because palm oil uh, plantation result in deforestation, and and therefore over there in Europe now uh, the issue of sustainable development is very important. Despite the slowdown, the economy, as we know, uh, in Europe as well as America, they are still talking about uh, uh, the Paris Agreement. They are still very upset at Donald Trump for pulling out America from the Paris Agreement. Uh, I, I'm find, I find it very uh, interesting though, because uh, we, we would have thought that they would be more concerned about bread and butter issues. Huh? Mm. Uh, but for them, uh, the the issue of sustainable development, the issue of uh, climate change is still very important to them, and therefore, do not underestimate their their what their concern over this issue with regard to palm oil. Uh, palm oil is, uh, in their mind, uh, uh, an industry that do not help in achieving sustainable development objectives. So I expect uh, that even though uh, the price may go up, etc., but the in, in terms of import of palm oil from Europe and America, then there may be some problems in the future as well. So that's why uh, we should rely on other things. What about um, uh, other industries like semiconductor? 
uh, now that is a bit uh, problematic also because uh, manufacturing industries, uh, electronic industry, uh, including uh, other sectors in the electronic industries, they they always look for cost issue, especially in what is called a matured markets, meaning we are talking about uh, markets uh, of products that have got many competitors, uh, such as computers, uh, such as ICs. All these are, uh, they, we call it the matured markets. They are not uh, state of the art or very, uh, very green, uh, new industry. Now, in the industry which is matured, what happened is that all the companies will want to, are uh, under cost pressure. And when they want, when they, and in order to remain uh, profitable, they they have to find low cost locations for their factories, and that's the reason why we recently we saw, uh, I think about last month, I think uh, Sony, I think uh, closed their factory in Penang. Uh, as you know, a couple of years ago, even Samsung, which operates a factory in. Uh, in Saramban has already closed down the factory. There are many um, semiconductor uh, electronic companies that have uh, relocated to other low cost uh, loca uh, locations, especially Indonesia. Uh, recently, uh, I was informed, I read somewhere that uh, uh, some, elect some IT companies have uh, announced their plan to open up uh, operations in Indonesia. Why? Because, uh, the main reason, it's not because Indonesia has got uh, what uh, people who are more skilled. As you know, we are more, we, we are not lacking in terms of skill and we have a lot of experience in electronics. Why do they want to go to Indonesia? Number one is it because the market is very big over there in Indonesia. So they probably are aiming for the domestic market. Secondly, is because of the low cost uh, operation that they can establish over there. Uh, the American, the Indonesian uh, government is doing their very best to make sure that Indonesia appears to be a very uh, attractive location for investments. As you know, recently they they passed a bill uh, in the Indonesian parliament, uh, which is very controversial because they even got rid of uh, minimum wage rules, right? Uh, also, rules that require company to observe um, uh, regulation with regard to the environment, environment protection. Huh? They don't have to submit uh, all kind of forms in order to start an operation. Huh? Forms regarding uh, environmental protection. So in other words, they don't care too much about environmental protection. Companies don't have to worry about that. You can continue and, and op operate, uh, open up your factory. You don't have to satisfy us in terms of your environmental uh, impact. Yeah? Why? Because the, the Indonesian want to, wants to show to the foreign investors, don't worry uh, about all this. We don't care about this. Therefore, your cost will be, you can minimize your cost by locating in Indonesia. Uh, in our case, we, are, we still have our environmental protection laws in place. And we are very concerned about that. Uh, and we are increasingly more concerned because of the uh, situation in uh, our water supply. <laughs> Recently, Islam also got in trouble, right? And then also remember the, the, the Sungai Chinchin in, uh, mm. in Sungai what? I can't remember now in, in Johor Bahru. Mm. So we, our people are very more concerned. Uh, so Kinchi, yeah. We are more concerned about environment. And, 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 and therefore, even when the uh, Kedah State Government announced the, the rare earth thing, Hmm. Uh, the most uh, the immediate reaction was what is hmm. the, the impact going to be in terms of the environment hmm. so we are very concerned about that and that that frightens companies you know, because that means uh, the cost of operation may go up but indonesia is uh, don't really care too much about that i'm not i'm talking about indonesia government lah, because i i read in news that many thousands of indonesia protested in the streets hmm. uh, when they passed the bill because they are also concerned about the environment they're not ordinary people Hmm. But the government are more concerned about investment. So, hmm. so despite the pro the protest, they proceeded with the with the law, and they were hoping that the protest will 
who will basically uh, be, the protesters become very tired and will give up. And in, indeed, they did give up. Now there are no more pro, there is no more protest in Jakarta. So mm. so the law is passed and no more problem as far as that is concerned. And the investors are uh, announcing they are coming to Indonesia. So uh, because because of that, it's going to be very difficult for us to to attract investment uh, because of this uh, attraction of maybe also Vietnam, Cambodia, mm. and also uh, Indonesia. Uh, therefore, uh, in short, right, uh, the as I said, I, I keep repeating myself again that the the future doesn't look very uh, very promising as far as the economy is concerned uh, in terms of investment, in terms of export, also not very. And very what is more worrying, as I mentioned also just now, is that in the meantime, our debt level is going up across all uh, sectors. The public debt is going up. Very interesting also, uh, because I read the paper yesterday that our finance minister said that our public debt is still less than 60% of GDP, actually, according to Fitch. It's already more than 60%, 64%. Actually, if you total up all the government debt, including the GLCs, it's, almost, it's 84%, actually, yeah, to GDP. Hmm. According to uh, Professor Kenneth Rogoff and Carmen uh, Reinhardt of Harvard, if the debt to GDP of a country is about 90%, then the economy will slow down. It's very difficult for the economy to grow. Ours, if you total up everything, I'm talking about uh, not only uh, the direct government debt, but also the GLCs, the Prasarana, the, the PTPTN, and one MDB, etc. You total all that. Uh, that is the uh, percentage to uh, to GDP is almost ninety percent, and therefore uh, it's very high. And therefore, uh, according to past studies, when when that level, uh, when the debt public debt level is that is that high, the economy is going to find it very difficult to grow. That is public debt, and then you have the corporate debt. Uh, I don't have a percentage of GDP, but it's also more than one trillion. And then I mentioned about consumer debt, uh, which is almost ninety uh, percent to GDP as well, more than one trillion. So when when you have a huge debt built up in the economy, it's going to be very difficult uh, for the economy to to grow, to grow because uh, everybody is under debt pressure, right? Uh, and that's what's happening in uh, in Europe, and that's what's happening in Japan. So this economy experienced fast growth in the past, but now when that level is very high, then everything starts to slow down. So that, that the room to maneuver is uh, limited, and I I am expecting Malaysia to be in that situation soon. If not now, already we are experiencing that. We we were experiencing growth of almost eight uh, percent last time in the nineteen nineties, right? Before the crash of 1997, we were almost 90 percent to GDP. That those that kind of growth will never come back to Malaysia. It's going to be uh, slower than that. That's why I say even six percent growth, which the finance minister mentioned in the parliament, I don't think we are going to reach that. It's going to be much slower and much uh, tougher to achieve. So despite all this uh, this news about um, the growth, uh, uh, sorry, the, the rise in the price of commodities, I do not see it going to help us a lot in terms of uh, our national economy. Sorry to say that. Okay, okay. okay Prof, uh, you mentioned that, but uh, yeah, but if you go to the micros uh, analysis, uh, uh, these uh, uh, brother uh, I mean, just ask this question. This uh, Cheryl uh, that raised this, the uh, the growth of the solar energy industries as glove industry, especially the glove industries. Despite we, you mentioned a uh, prof that uh, now investor will move to Indonesia because they have no minimum wage, they don't care about the environment. So I mean, investor will go uh, and invest in Indonesia, but. If you see in Malaysia, the industries, especially uh, from the gloves industries, we are doing well. And the projection that despite there will be a little bit of decrease uh, following year for next year with this uh, uh, 
vaccine for COVID-19, oh, do you think that it also can help a bit of our economy? Okay. Oh. All right, thank you. Uh, well, with regard to the glove, so we are talking about a very uh, specialized sector, right? Okay. Uh, medical equipment uh, mm. and uh, low-end medical equipment. Uh, we are, if we are talking about high-end, mm. laser type, uh, all sophisticated, these are not manufactured in Malaysia at the moment, right? These are yeah. manufactured in Europe uh, for top-end medical equipment. We are only talking about low-end, such as uh, medical gloves. But medical gloves, uh, it's just a small sector, mm. a couple of companies, right? It's only a couple of companies. And what I'm worried about is, is we found out the reason why they are very profitable is because they have been, uh, uh, they have been paying their work workers very low wages. Mm. And uh, the workers are also uh, not given um, proper, what? proper working conditions, right? Uh, and that's the reason why there, there was a controversy, a controversy recently about their hostels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They are treated very badly. Uh, so, as I said, the reason why they are profitable is because the cost is really low because of the the, the way they operate, and that can create problem in the future. I'm not, I would not be surprised because you know the trade unions, especially U.S. trade unions, they are always watching this. You know, uh, they are always watching uh, the the news on. Uh, workers, uh, con working conditions in uh, in developing countries. The the unions are upset in the US. They are very upset because many companies re relocate their operations to Asia uh, to developing mm. countries. So in order to to stop these companies from coming over, they will highlight the working conditions and the human rights issue of workers in the developing countries like Malaysia. So when you have uh, news, last time, uh, this is old story, like I'm talking about Nike, you know, when they, they talk about uh, sexual harassment of of, subcon of subcontractors to Nike, uh, the workers in the sub in the factories that subcontract to Nike, uh, sexual harassment issues in the factories were blown up like crazy in order to affect the sentiment of American consumers. So Nike was in big trouble. So now that uh, the, the story of the working condition in the top globe and uh, all these companies are coming out, that may affect um, uh, what the the uh, the export of our uh, products to America, especially in, in Europe. I hope I, th I hope that's not going to happen, uh, But there are, that is very real. That very real. so uh, some companies. Uh, may relocate in the future if you want to mm. to. Uh, to overcome this problem because our company, our, our authorities are also cracking down on this, on this situation, right? And uh, some companies may relocate to other countries if they want to get away from this. But of course, the US will also follow, follow the story. You know, if you go to Vietnam, they will still highlight the, the problem of the working condition of the workers. So um, we do not know like, whether the companies will relocate or not. But to answer your question just now is, uh, if one, a couple of small sector like uh, rubber gloves, so it's not going to help the world economy. It's just one small sector. Uh, we need more than just just one sector. And even that sector now is is now yeah. in, in trouble in terms of the the bad press coverage. Right? Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Dr. Zabidi, uh, do you, do you think, have anything to respond? Okay. I think in terms of the uh, uh, glove industry, right? Today I I saw this from news saying that you know, uh, massing already you know starting to move from uh, uh, properties towards to the uh, glove manufacturing. In fact, they have been, uh, what we call that, uh, uh, bidding uh, their manufacturing uh, uh, company in, uh, in Malaysia, whereby it will be ready somewhere in uh, next year, uh, 2021. I think this is good, whereby uh, companies start to uh, develop or diversify from the current uh, business uh, that they are uh, 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 they are used to and towards to the other thing like like Masin doing. I think this is will create another uh, 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 demand for for uh, local workers uh, to work with uh, this company, right? I'm sure that uh, you know uh, they will be employ uh, worker people uh, to work with them. Then uh, people who are mean uh, uh, 
have been retrenched from from this kind of uh, COVID nineteen because of the uh, what we call that the uh, company don't have a revenue to sustain them. Then uh, these people can go into a study. Uh, working with this company who are doing this uh, glove industry. So just to add on uh, the basis of that. In fact, uh, there is some other small, small company or is starting to uh, going towards to this. Uh, but uh, the important thing that the, the what uh, Professor Nazari mentioned uh, in terms of the uh, 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 procedures of the environment of the uh, workers who are working with this glove company must be uh, very strict and also must be uh, uh, follow the standard practice of uh, international. Uh, that's uh, my, my thoughts on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Datuk. Huh? Uh, this question uh, is addressed to Datuk Zabidi uh, from yeah. Sao, Sao Harana. Uh, mm. I, I think I did share uh, once you have presented uh, your presentation just now with regard to Suku. Huh? Question is why do Suku fall in the time of COVID when government need financing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it, it, it depends because normally the suku is short, right? Uh, it, it, it depends on the investors of type, right? If there is a uh, investor's demand towards to this suku, I'm sure that, you know, uh, the government for sure will be uh, issue more, right? Mm. The other thing, the corporate also, what's their thinking is that normally towards to the uh, how much return they can bring into the company mm. right and then in terms of cost saving of the company by issuing suku whether it's is is uh reasonable for them to issue suku or they can do something like borrowing direct from the uh, financing so mm. this is between um, a chicken and egg so but for me uh, for this uh, next year most of the things will be uh, suku issue uh, coming from the uh, to tackle the uh, social issue uh, like uh, green uh, green suku uh, that's the the area that suku will be a uh, uh, sector that we uh, uh, what we call that uh, showing some uh, growth on 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 uh, what we call that uh, especially ESG side actually okay so are yeah. you saying are you saying that that we will see more suku will be issued next year inshallah if if uh, times i mean there is some recovery on our economy uh, mm. hopefully it, it happen okay okay thank you uh, prof nazari the i'm sorry the from the same person so horana uh, uh, i'm thinking the, about this uh, mentioning about this uh, green shots of economy uh that is what i mean this comment by by this uh soharana from uh this shahrul abdul rahman or abdul rahim uh why do you uh prof he addressed to prof nazari you are very pessimistic about this uh green shot of the economy why am, why am i so pessimistic <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is based on my uh, observation of the trend, also the statistics, uh, especially the trend. If you look at uh, the trend, it's always uh, the growth rate is always going down uh, as far as the economy is concerned. Whereas other other indicators, uh, other indicators that that can create problems that are going up. For example, I mentioned just now is the uh, level of indebtedness in society. Yeah? is going up uh, the public sector finance public debt uh, is going up and i mentioned the reason that's the reason why a fish rating uh, has downgraded our uh, what our bond right uh, our rating has gone uh, has been downgraded because of the worry about government debt and then i also mentioned about the growth in consumer debt all these when when debt grows up then the economy if I find it very difficult to grow, I said this is based on the trend in other countries too. If you look at, if you study the growth of the European economy, they were growing very fast before, but now everybody is actually, uh, all the countries in Europe are finding it very difficult. Two, three percent growth only, uh, uh, annual growth. And now they are in trouble because of COVID, of course. Yeah. So people, I study the economy, say, say countries like, uh, people talk a lot about the Nordic countries. Uh, Hmm. The Denmark, uh, Sweden, 
they think those are countries that are well managed. Actually, if if you look at the over there, the growth is also very slow, very slow, two three percent. And the other thing is this: uh, the cost of living over there is very high. You know, uh, ma many people think that uh, the people over there in those countries are having a good time. This is why I want to mention it because people have a wrong impression of things at the moment. They want to be optimistic and they think that things are going to improve and then things can be as good as the Nordic countries. But the, the Nordic countries situation is not that great. If you are living in in Norway, uh, in, in Denmark, for example, Copenhagen, I just mentioned Copenhagen because I went there two years ago and I met my PhD student over there. Let me tell you the story so that people, yeah. people will not say yeah. I, I made up my story. My PhD student, ex PhD student, she was a, she's a foreign student, Iranian. She was studying in the uh, University of Malaya. And uh, I remember she came to the university in a car, and then we had a discussion. And then she has a nice apartment in Sri Kemangan. And then she graduated, and then she went to Denmark, worked in Copenhagen in a medical uh, supply manufacturing industry. And she's a marketing director you know, over there. So I, I went to Copenhagen. Uh, I was on another project. Like, basically, I was on boat to Gaza. <laughs> the boat started from uh, Copenhagen and all the way to Gaza. Anyway, I was there for a couple of days and I met her. I said, I said, can you come and let's have some uh, discussion, right? And then, and then she said, give me one hour because I need to go there. I need one hour to go there. And then she, she came by bus. That's why it took one hour. So she said, you know what? Uh, last time I used to have my own place and I used to drive a car in Copenhagen, even though she is now a medical, a marketing director of a company, she cannot afford to have a car. She cannot even go by bus. And then she had to share a partner with three other people because it's so expensive, she said. So, so she was better off as a PhD student, getting some money from her parents in KL compared to working as a marketing director in Copenhagen. <laughs> She's better off over here in KL because life is uh, better for her. Over there is very, everything very expensive, you said. So if you go to Copenhagen, you see people cycling a lot. Huh? Yeah. Cycling. So I thought they were very concerned about health compared to us. I found out the reason is because they cannot afford to, many of them cannot afford to drive cars. Very expensive. The, the, the tax is very expensive. Petrol is very expensive. So people, people cycle because that is the cheapest alternative, you know, unless you want to travel, travel long distance. So those countries are also expensive, very low growth. And poverty is growing over there in Denmark as well, you know. So I read all this trend. That's why I say, uh, when when that level goes up to a certain level, over there it's also very high. Everything very expensive. You know, in in that in uh, in uh, Zurich, huh? by the way, I want to share with you, is that only thirty percent of Zurich uh, residents own their properties. Seventy percent will just rent. Do you, do you know the reason why? Expensive, very expensive, right? Uh, so the trend is like that. That's why it's happening in our country too. Yeah. Uh, and so I observe the trend. People think that they don't study the trends in other countries and they, they have sometimes uh, false optimism. Uh, if you study trends in other countries, you will see the trend. Huh? Uh, people think that uh, our house uh, situ housing situation can be improved. If government do certain things and certain things, everything will be okay. But actually, you look at other countries like Hong Kong is worse, of course, right? But let's go back to Switzerland. I was there also in uh, in, in Zurich uh, last, uh, last year. And I found out it's so hugely expensive. You want to buy a house over there. And this is probably, I want to share with that, that too also. Eh? Yeah. Yeah? Mm, yeah. Because I met a, a guy who bought a property, right? Yeah. And then he said, actually, I I have, I have to go out of Zurich in order to buy a property. Because if I stay in yeah. Zurich, I cannot buy, so it's too expensive. So he went out to, to build a house, borrowed money from a bank. Interesting, right? And then I said, so how much is your property? He said, uh, it's about 1 million Swiss francs. Right? It's about one four million ringgit. Yeah. Yeah. And then I said, okay, you finance, you borrow money from a bank. Yeah, it's not easy, you know, because I have to put up 300,000 first. 300,000 Swiss francs, 700,000, I borrowed from the bank. And then I asked a simple question. I said, uh, I want to compare Malaysia. In Malaysia, the uh, the payment period is about 30 to 40 years, right? So I said, How, what is your payment period? When are you going to finish paying your loan? And then he looked at me and said, I don't understand your question. 
<laughs> but this is a simple question. I said, okay. you borrowed money from bank, you will want yeah. to settle your loan. So I want to know when, when is, would be the last payment you made and then your, set, your loan will be settled. And then mm. he said, no, see, I'm not. I have no plan to settle my loan. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, okay. What's happening? Said, right, now it's my okay. to be confused. Say, what okay. do you mean? You, you're not going to pay back your loan? No. So what is your arrangement with the bank? My arrangement with the bank is simply to service the interest only. Wow. I only service the interest forever. Forever, he said. Forever. I will only, because the interest is very low. Interest rate mm. is actually about, about 1%. Mm. Okay. Only 1%. But the price of property is so expensive, not many people can buy. Even though the interest rate is very 1%, the, the price is so high, not many people can buy. You have to have a lot of money. And then the bank mm. wants to you have a lot of money in the, in the account as well for maintenance, etc. Et so the bank is only happy to get the interest. But the bank will always own the property until, until my friend dies. And then I say, what happened to the property? It will be passed on to my children, but they must service the interest. If they do not service the interest, the bank will, uh, will oh. shut the house. So they will continue. And who owns the property? My children will only own 30, uh, what? 30%. 70% mm. will always be in the hand of the bank forever. So that is the arrangement because property price is very expensive. So mm. I am saying that the same thing is going to happen to this country too. In the future, mm. right, property prices keep going up and keep going up, going up, mm. and many people will find it very difficult, very unaffordable. They will then take the renting, uh, renting alternative. They are forced to rent, and the only very rich ones can buy property. And even that, they can. They will be like the Swiss, where they will only own. 30% and the 70% yeah. will be owned by the bank forever. So this is a trend which people do not study in other countries. I study this trend yeah. and I see that I mentioned just now the growth rate of these economies are very, very low. Uh, so so don't, if, if there is any sudden growth, it sometimes is speculative nature. For example, you have some yeah. property bump when people, when people speculate about certain assets and certain sectors, you can see a price goes up. Uh, mm. But it will go down later on, right? Uh, we see, for example, now there is a price goes up in the in the Bitcoin uh, sector, uh, but that is speculative, you know. That is just yeah. going for a short while, and then it's going to go down again in the future, and that may happen in many uh, many sectors too. But over the long term, it's, it's going to be very tough, uh, as far as the economy is going. It's, it will go chug along. It will chug along, but only at very uh, slow pace uh, in the future. And then we have trends which uh, we show will also contribute to a slow growth because the trend, for example, the, the birth fertility rate in this country mm. is going down. Not many people, yeah. not many people keep track of that. Last time people used to have five children, yeah. Now, you know, our fertility rate now is less than two. It's about 1.9, 1.8 something now. Uh, this year is 1.8 something. Last year was 1.9, below 2.1. 2.1 is the rate that you need in order to sustain the population uh, size. If you have two point, more than 2.1, it grows. But now we are less than uh, less than one, less than two, one point eight something. That means our our population is going down, and therefore mm. our our what is called labor um, uh, what uh, uh, our labor sector uh, will mm. also go down in terms of size, Correct. just like Japan. And when it goes down, the economy will find it very difficult to grow because you have more, more, uh, uh, more old people compared to young people, right? Because the birth rate is, is gone down, so the the proportion of young people compared to the old people will, will go down. But we need young people in order to grow the economy. Uh, so uh, and and that is not happening in Japan, and that is also the trend in our country too. So that's why I say I'm I'm very pessimistic. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the, because the trend in other countries yeah. show the same thing. Uh, yeah. the trend in all other countries. Uh, thank yeah. you. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, thank you, Prof. I mean, Dr. Zabiri, you have anything? <laughs> I mean, the question was addressed to uh, uh, Prof. Nazari. Do, do you have anything to add uh, from the, uh, I mean, the, uh, the questions to Prof. Nazari? Okay. Co uh, comments, uh? Okay. Uh, I think uh, probably I, I I talking on different perspective whereby you know uh, Islamic banking is about you know helping the uh, people uh, during this COVID nineteen right. I think the structure, for example, like you know uh, whereby uh, the banking side coming out with the product whereby 
you apa uh, uh, you uh, the bank own the 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 the, the properties first and also uh, renting up to the uh, to the uh, their client is a good initiative lah right? by uh, at least uh, within certain uh, uh, years then the uh, the uh, clients will be uh, uh, own the uh, properties when they are uh, their financial is uh, uh, in uh, is stable lah so this is the product that Islamic finance. I think currently they already have in the market in Malaysia. Uh, will help the people who are not, uh, what you call that, afford to 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 buy the property. Whereby ijarah, which is a concept that we use in Islamic finance, is good to be uh, established uh, so that uh, it will help uh, people at lower income uh, to have their. Uh, own property in in new future. Uh, that that's my comment towards the uh, question just now. Yeah, Datuk Zabidi. Perhaps I think I also would like to add. I think one of the good products that uh, uh, some of the uh, Islamic banks introduced before this. Now everything is uh, by using Tawaro. But yeah. I think I remember that uh, Musharaka Mutana Kisa. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, I think uh, some people make joke of this term. Musyarakah yeah. mu tak nak kisah means you musyarakah mu tak nak kisah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something like that. But I think one of the good product of this musyarakah mu tak nak kisah is give something. Uh, we call it this. Uh, we call it the 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 the, the customer will hmm. feel safe in that sense. As you like you mentioned the ijarah uh, hmm. product. I mean, will be on the basis that as as years goes along. I think at the end of the day, that property belongs to you. And I think the Islamic uh, finance perspective, as and maybe we can uh, embark into this. Uh, you mentioned yep. uh, Datuk Zabidi, this Wakaf endowment. How mm -hmm. I remember Prof uh, Sudin Harun yep. when he was a director in Sambi Sambi and also a member of the Sharia Committee, shared before because he was with the Yayasan Wakaf, trying yep. to explore how this Wakaf. Uh, can sustain on this requirement on this need uh, that uh, professor yeah. we are talking about we need a roof on top of our head uh, and, and perhaps uh, some ideas of through wakaf uh, mm. for this was introduced i think were introduced but uh, we hope that uh, the islamic finance can come uh, and help uh, for the need of the people. I think when we talk about Wakaf, uh, it, it, it goes beyond whether I, you yeah. Muslim or not Muslim. Uh, yes, Prof. Nazari? Yeah, I want to add a bit about Wakaf. Huh? I did a study yeah. on Wakaf a couple of years ago. And I found out the, the total asset of Wakaf in this country at that time was about 6 billion. Mm. But probably now, a couple of years, maybe has increased to 10 billion. But and then people talk a lot about Wakaf as a mm. potential uh, contributor to the economy. I yeah. want to just look at people to look at the figures and then realize the the what the insignificant of Wakaf in our economy. Yeah. Mm. The the total asset I mentioned just now is probably around ten billion. But do you mm. know that the total amount of debt, household debt, is more than one trillion? Mm. Okay, more than one trillion. By the way, if you total up the asset of all the banks, about more than three trillion or so, right? As the total asset of banks, banking sector, it's much bigger. So I'm I'm saying that Wakaf, in order to develop, needs contribution from people. Mm. The problem is that people don't have money. <laughs> they are they are trying to service their debt, right? And those yeah. who are now uh, are not able, they are not. Some are okay now because of moratorium. If without moratorium, they are in trouble. So yeah. they have to service their debt. They they are have they have to pay their their housing loan one month maybe I don't know it depends on the value of the house of course mm -hmm. uh, maybe two three thousand and then mm -hmm. the property the car a couple or more uh. so in the end their their money that they can contribute to work is a couple of dollars only a month mm -hmm. that's the reason why the work up growth is very small compared mm -hmm. to the growth of the banking sector as well as the their debt uh, the mm -hmm. household debt and the corporate debt is growing very fast that's mm -hmm. why it's bought. Uh, it's more than three trillion. It's totally all, all the uh, household debt, public debt, and corporate debt is more than three trillion. So 
wakaf is only 10 billion this no. is this is 10 over more than 3000 nothing so that is why i say uh, people talk a lot but the 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 rule of wakaf is is small eh? there is, you know there is not a single uh, significant hospital in this country that is run by wakaf the biggest hospital that is run by wakaf is in rangoon i studied this i read about this they're in, in Burk, Myanmar, not a Muslim country. Muslims contribute a lot of money. They can run a free hospital. It's called Muslim Free Hospital Rangoon. You can Google it. Completely free. We don't have this in our country. We don't have this. You want to go to uh, a private hospital? Subhanja American Center, Dawaka, whatever, right? All government yeah. hospital. You want to be free. But the Wakaf run is completely free. Because they, we don't have the money to run it. People don't have the money to contribute to a, a a work hospital. That's why Wakaf institution is very small in our country. So, as I say, I've, I've studied it. People have been talking about Wakaf for 20 years now, but it's not going anywhere because uh, everybody is uh, most, a lot of people are, are, are having a lot of financial problems. They have they want to service their debt and therefore they can only contribute a little bit of extra money to Wakaf. And and the Wakaf is very, that's the, the, it's the limited growth. We have to address the issue of uh, of our growing indebtedness of our society if we want to talk about Wakaf mm. in the future. Okay, I want to also mention, share with you, uh, I studied a little bit about Mutak, Masyarakat Pesanan Kisah and also uh, Ijara, the, the what's called um, rent to own scheme, right? As we know, and I have a friend in Eastern Malaya who studied the rent to own scheme also, and he said, she said, people don't do not when they go to rent to own skin, they don't really study it. Actually, the rent to own skin, uh, to own skin. If you if you go into that scheme, you you are supposed to rent for let's say ten years, right? And then you have to decide after that. Let us say after five years, you decide you don't want to to be in that scheme because you have some financial problem. You don't want to. You cannot buy a proper property, so you want to opt out. <laughs> you still have to. Because because you your contract is for ten years, you have to top it up. If you rent a house, not on the rent to own scheme, right? You can just walk away from your uh, rented house, but not in this scheme. If you are in there for ten years, the the extra years that of your contract you have to service that, the, right? Uh, you have to service that, and therefore you you can be penalized. Uh, but if you decide to change your mind uh, before your uh, period to decide. If you change your mind uh, after a few years, you are not able to walk just walk away from the from the scheme. And and many people they don't realize it, and then they suddenly they they find out they are in big in big trouble. So now under the situation where everything is quite uncertain, where the economy is uncertain, right? We do not know what's going to happen. COVID is still with us. Companies are still. Uh, in trouble, if moratorium ends, the company may close down. People who are working in this company may lose their jobs. So if they enter into this uh, into this loan arrangements, or either mucharaka mutana kisa, which is still uh, even though on paper is like a mucharaka contract, as we know, if they do not have the money to pay, if they have to, if they dis if they are unable to continue with mucharaka mutana kisa contract. And all the laws will be borne by the client of the banks, right? We know that uh, it's still a credit uh, arrangement in that sense. The banks cannot afford to, to to absorb the loss just like that. If you have uh, suddenly people cannot pay, the banks will go for the client also, uh, even though it's called Musharraka uh, Mutana Kisah. This was important. Look at the small prints in the contract. All clients, all the losses will be borne by the clients. So uh, we we have to be very uh, frank about this. Huh? We have to be very frank. Uh, the Islamic banking, Islamic, Islamic banking alternative, only has a limited uh, role to play in terms of contributing to to make things better. They are operating under the banking framework. They have to compete with conventional banks. They have to show the same kind of return, and therefore many of the products cannot be very different from the existing uh, conventional products. Even the suku which uh, Datuk mentioned. Uh, I mentioned I had a discussion with uh, with Dr. Daud Baka, who is the chairman of the sorry, uh, panel advisor to Panagara. Mm -hmm. He told me basically, Suku is actually 
a credit instrument because if yep. you make it into an equity instrument you cannot you can attract uh, investments they will expect more than about 13% return in order for them to to uh, to be interested so you have to make it into a credit instrument in order to attract investments so if you are if it is a credit instrument it will not be very different from a, a bond uh, right they have got the same characteristics in the end even though on paper it is it said it is said to be an asset as an instrument, but in reality, it's a credit instrument. So the ability of the Islamic financial instruments to to play the role is a bit limited under the present circumstances. Uh, that is my frank uh, assessment of the situation. Okay, okay, thank you, okay. Uh, okay Prof. Dr. Zabidi, you want to respond from you? From, you are from the industry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, actually, for for uh, uh, for me, uh, in terms of this. Uh, um, musyarakah mutanakisa and also ijara right i think the 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 uh, developer of this uh, islamic uh, finance industry uh, should find a way you know the best thing to 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 coming up with uh, innovative product in this case right so for me now it seems that uh, everything towards to the uh, what to call that uh, uh, tawaruk right so something need to be done uh, here, uh, whereby uh, we need to coming up with something that uh, more attractive product, whereby you know uh, not to charge unnecessary uh, penalties to the client. For example, that uh, we have something like, for example, you give financing, then you have the uh, client deposit on the asset, just matching it. Probably uh, by netting it, then you know uh, the client will be uh, not having unnecessary. Uh, uh, charges of uh, uh, profit they need to pay to to the 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 the, uh, the banking uh, that they are uh, uh, apply with uh, on the financing. So in this case, this is something that innovative product that the the uh, banking can come out whereby at least it reduce burden of uh, instead of paying uh, the full amount of principal every month. Uh, on the uh, profit they need to pay, but we just doing something like a, a netting basis, whereby, for example, if uh, the loan is hundred million, right, financing hundred million, uh, sorry, hundred thousand, then if the client have uh, the, what we call that uh, ten thousand on the uh, their saving, right, so probably this uh, ninety thousand will be uh, uh, charged instead of uh, hundred thousand. Uh, as a principal amount, so this is something that the uh, banking need to to think how to 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 help the the the, the client when when uh, giving this kind of uh, financing facilities. So uh, 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 what we call that uh, importantly is that uh, what we call that uh, uh, Islamic finance is about uh, you know helping. The, the UMA uh, to reduce whatever their their their, their problem uh, in uh, daily uh, daily life. Uh, so that that's my thoughts on that. The other yeah. thing on the the the, the uh, 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 suku right uh, prop. The only thing on the suku is that we uh, having this kind of credit instrument because uh, in terms of the usage uh, of this uh, suku is more towards to the uh, helping the growth of. Uh, Everything is not really uh, what we call that, uh, not uh, destroying the environment. For example, like uh, hotel, right? We invest in uh, giving financing in hotel using the suku, right? Now the hotel itself need to comply, you know, certain certain things so that not destroying the environment. So so that's the things that why suku can play a, a, a good uh, instrument to help the, uh, for example. Not really on 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 uh, uh, tourist uh, hotel industry, probably in terms of education and also healthcare. So this is why uh, the usage of the suku is very important uh, compared to the uh, conventional bond. Yep, that's my thoughts on it. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Datu. We have one last question, and uh, this uh, question addressed to Prof Nazari KT Chan. Uh, with the downturn of economic and unstable political environment that you have mentioned, the possible short-term and long-term growth seem to be very slow. What would be the solutions 
to cure the short term and long term sideways of the Malaysian economy. Prof Nazari? Oh, that is a <laughs> that is a one million dollar question. <laughs> How are you gonna so uh, I I I don't I'll be very honest with you. That's, if anybody wants to give me uh, uh, the job of the finance minister, I would reject outright. Even you think <laughs> one billion dollar, I would not take it because it is an impossible task. I would say, right? Is is the what is the cure? Is is uh, the whole thing is a. Uh, it's a systemic. Right? The system is such that it's going to create problem in, in, in the future. It's, it's not going to, it's in, almost impossible, I would say that straight away. Yeah? Uh, you, as a company, you can only go, if you are a businessman, you will go for certain sectors. You have to be very smart in order to grab certain strategic sectors in order to, to make money and to grow. For example, if you can read the trend of, uh, now people, uh, Lazada, for example, is doing very well, uh, Shopee and all logistic company, right? So you can go for that. That is how you survive in the in the coming future. But the overall economy, overall economy of uh, the nation, as well as the global economy, is not going to be very uh, what uh, positive in the future. But still, companies can survive as long as you know how to find the niche, the niche, right? So I wouldn't say I, I'm not going. That's why I say I'm not going to be. Anybody offer me to be the finance minister, I will not take it. It's impossible task. Uh, but if you are talking about, if you are a businessman, you have to be very smart. You identify niches that can grow under the very difficult circumstances now. So you can see, for example, the medical situation. Uh, you have to go there. Of course, uh, you have to. You have to get. You have to have the ability and the know-how uh, to to be able to survive. But if you are smart, you can do that. For example, not many people. Uh, foresee uh, last time everybody thought that post laju is going to be finished right nobody wants yeah. to use post laju mm. anymore right everybody yeah. internet everything right suddenly post laju is looking for for investments right? they need their their demand for their services has grown up like crazy because everybody orders stuff from from their home now they don't even want to go shopping now and so it's gone up so there are certain certain niches in the certain mm. sectors that that can still grow uh, uh, and this these uh, pockets of growth will 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 be there somewhere in the economy, uh, but overall it's going to be tougher and tougher. Uh. Just like as I said, just like in America, in Japan there are still companies that can survive, but the overall economy of Japan is always going down slower and slower. So you have to you have to it's like a fish in a rapidly uh, shrinking pond. So <laughs> you have to find a place somewhere in order to survive find oxygen somewhere but the pond is shrinking and shrinking all the time uh, unless we we change the whole setup completely you know uh, and and how do you do that uh, that is very difficult as i say one of the main reason why we have this very difficult situation of the economy to grow is because of the debt burden uh, the debt burden is huge uh, people may not know the total global debt now is uh, almost 270 trillion US dollars. This is the global total debt. So this is huge, eh? uh, uh, overhanging the whole world. And that is why it's very difficult for companies and companies and countries to grow. They can find spaces to grow, but overall it's, it's tougher and tougher. Unless you change the whole setup, and that's why Islamic finance is all about, where we go against riba, right? So yep. if we do not have if we do not have practice riba in the first place in the beginning, we will not mm -hmm. have the, all this two hundred and seventy trillion US dollar debt. Right. This is all riba, and this is the reason why we are all suffering. And so, mm -hmm. if you want to talk about uh, for the future generation uh, to have a more positive uh, uh, what outlook for the for the long term for the future generation, we have to think about how to come up with a system, the economic system that do not rely on uh, debt. Uh, because riba, the riba anasia is actually debt, right? Riba yeah. probably is about exchange, mm. but riba anasia is all debt. So uh, yeah. even even Islamic finance that we want to come about should be a Islamic finance that is real musharaka, real musharaka, mm -hmm. not a debt model. And that is yeah. uh, and that is not easy, right? Uh, as I told, yeah. also mentioned just now, it's not very easy. You mm. you you have to change the value system of people. Not Correct. if you have the same value system. Yeah. They, you, for example, just now, you have to create a, a, a suku, which is credit instrument in order to get investors. 
Yeah. Because they don't want to take risk. So mm. you have to change the, the the value of people where they 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 will they do not mind taking risk and do not go for uh, for what uh, risk free investment. Uh, if we can change the value system of people, then maybe we can uh, come up with a real Islamic way of uh, finance. Uh, Mm. Uh, which is uh, real musharaka. At the moment, it is not real. We know, right? Tawaru. Uh, we talk mm. about. We don't have to discuss about that. The, real, yeah. the reason why Tawaru is also controversial is also because it's a form of a debt instrument or debt arrangement as well. Uh, mm. Camouflaging under uh, a trade yeah. arrangement. So that is the future, and this one needs a lot of work by many people, not only uh, corporate people. Not only bankers, but also uh, educational educationists, right? To talk about values, to talk about the real system, uh, about what is what economy should be all about, uh, what is the value of a country. We we are not even able to solve our own corruption problem. People only think about money when they want to elect people, politician. Mm. They say, "What can this politician give to me?" They are not thinking yeah. about what the politician can do for the country as a whole, but they say. What can you do to me? That is why corrupt politicians keep being elected, right? Even though they have very, very, they are very famous of being corrupted, they still can win elections in certain <laughs> certain constituencies. <laughs> why? Because the voters say, "You give me money, I will elect you." So it's all it's corruption to the lowest level, you know. And that's the reason why our corrupt leaders are still around, because our people are still uh, what are still practicing corrupt corruption at the lowest level. Huh? So we need to change this also, and there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, uh, yeah, right. correct. Yeah. Okay, on? thank you, thank, thank you, uh, Prof Nazari. I think we have a few minutes left before we end our session. Uh, we, I would like to, uh, I mean, uh, give this uh, opportunity to Dr. Zabidi to have uh, last few words. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you uh, very much for. Uh, having me until uh, this time, right? So uh, for me, uh, important thing is that uh, for uh, COVID-19 uh, will be continued further. Uh, but for me, uh, the important thing, we should have the uh, social Islamic finance instrument, uh, which uh, can make it uh, different, uh, whereby uh, there are uh, several things that, uh, things that can help uh, core Islamic countries banks and also uh, corporation uh, to uh, navigate this uh, current situation. Among them is uh, Kadu Rasan, uh, which is an uh, instrument to provide uh, cost-free uh, breathing uh, uh, space uh, until this environment uh, stabilized. The other thing is that uh, in terms of the uh, social suku, uh, this instrument uh, will uh, help the uh, support the education and also the healthcare system uh, I mean the uh, current slum and uh, attract uh, environment. Uh, the other things that we can use uh, instrument is that something like wakaf that we have been discussing earlier. Uh, this will could help the uh, provide affordable housing solution uh, or access to healthcare and also education for people that might have a last uh, portion of their their income. Uh, lastly, on the zakat uh, based on uh, uh, the uh, uh, market participant, uh, we believe, uh, I believe that the uh, zakat will help the uh, compensate for lost household income uh, because of uh, the COVID-19. With that, uh, uh, that's my uh, last say for this uh, 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 conference. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Azam. Thank you very much, Dr. Zabidi. And uh, Prof. Nazari? I, I talk too much already. Mm. Too much already, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, just as a conclusion. If you want, if you want the conclusion is that, um, yeah, the the we have to think about the long term uh, change. In Sorry. The, uh, yeah, long term. We cannot always think about short term only. If we think oh, about yeah. short term only, it's going to get worse and worse. For example, Correct. now the government is thinking about short term, so they want to spend money. They they borrow more and then they spend. But this is all short term, uh, short term political consideration and short term uh, economic consideration. This is not going to help our future generation. We have to think about long-term solution and also to change the whole system, uh, not to be uh, based on debt, but rather be based on real Islamic finance, which is Musharaka Mudarabah. Mm -hmm. And that also requires change in our value system, 
where we hmm. think more about giving to society rather than about uh, protecting yeah. ourselves. Huh? So that's yeah. what uh, about the Kaldu Hassan just now said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Our, our economy should be based on uh, impact hmm. uh, practice, uh, impact giving, hmm. giving to others, yeah. and looking for the pleasure of God and akhirat rather than about short term. Yeah. Okay, thank you very thank much, you. Prof. Nazari. With that, I think uh, we both are uh, speakers, Prof. Nazari and uh, Dato Zabidi. On behalf of IMS, IS Malaysia, we would like to thank uh, both of you uh, for sharing with us your valuable thoughts. And I think uh, uh, what, what we can see here in for the year 2021 that we are going to, uh, I mean, experience in the next two weeks would be lots of difficulties, uh, uncertainty, and we hope that uh, we we can over, I mean, to come the circumstances, the difficulties, uh, for that matter. Uh, this uh, is something finance talk series, economic and financial outlook 2021, uh, comes to an end, and inshallah we will be seeing you again in our next event, inshallah, on halal vaccine on Tuesday, Inshallah. 22nd Thank you. of December. Uh, thank you again, Prof. Nazari and Dato' Zabidi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam.